Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with IT Career Questions, and I'm here with Catherine, who I've actually interviewed before a few years ago. Yeah, it's and been a few. It, it's been a while, yeah. It's been a... I think I, I just... I missed you. I missed you, too. Oh, well, I'm glad we're back I'm doing good. this again. It's good. Oh. It's good. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, the challenges and the different experiences that Catherine has had working in IT as a woman, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I'm really excited for this video because we, we did this one before. We did. But now it's a follow up. It's four years later. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Before we begin today's video, I want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Cybrary. If you're looking to get the best IT training that's out there, definitely check out Cybrary. And they have really awesome courses that really align you towards the cybersecurity field. Mm -hmm. Make sure you use the coupon code ITCQ50. You guys can save 50% off of your membership over there. And Catherine over here is actually a user of Cybrary. And what, what do you think yeah. about Cybrary? I, so here's what I'll tell you. This um, is not a paid this advertisement. This is not a paid right advertisement. Here. I had no idea Cybrary was sponsoring this video when I came here to do this with Zach. Um, so I joined Cybrary probably maybe October, November of last year. And then I let it drop um, because I, I'm i going into cybersecurity. That's not exactly what I do. Like I do some of it, but I don't. I, I want to do that full time. That's what I want my next career path to be. Um, and so then I let it go and I, and I've checked, uh, um, Skillsoft and Quizlet and like just about any other free thing that you can think of. And I am now back with Cybrary and, um, using their security plus practice exams right now because I'm dangerously close to taking that certification test. And then with my goal to move right into their CEH, um, course study to uh, become a pen tester. So those are my goals and Cybrary is my platform of choice. And so there you go. I totally and completely recommend Cybrary. Awesome. Yeah, four years later. So I think um, the last time I was here for Zach's channel was four years ago and I had just left um, the safety net of six years in education and went to corporate America. Um, and my thought process with the corporate America gig was um, there was going to be so much more room for growth and opportunity and advancement and those kinds of things. Um, that was a rude awakening. So um, I work for one of the largest global organizations. We are the fifth largest um, company in the world. I will just say that. You're a big wanna, deal. Uh, we're a big deal. If you want to Google that, you can Google that. So um, Google the fifth largest. Fifth largest company in the world. While well, Zach's forming a question about the diversity as far as like a global organization goes, him and I were talking before we started this, and, and he thought it rather funny because most jobs that he's had, he's worked with women. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I just told you out of a team of 220, there's like seven of us. So when it comes to women in IT, we are the minority, very much the minority. And I also was mentioning to Zach earlier, he did a video, how long ago was your imposter video? Uh, it was six months ago, maybe. Okay. So he did a video on imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And the title of it intrigued me, and I was like, what's he talking about? So I watched it, and I'm watching it, and I'm going, okay, I can, I can kind of, I can kind of see that. So then when I started to uh, switch gears into where I want to go and where I want to be within IT um, and being sometimes the only woman in a meeting or in a room, I truly know what imposter syndrome is. Um, I, I have my bachelor's degree in network administration. I've been doing this for 12 years. I've continually managed to advance myself and learn more and um, I, I take great pride in the strides and how hard I've worked to get where I'm at but that imposter syndrome thing is really really real and it is especially real as a woman who walks into a meeting full of 30 men um, today for as a matter of fact we had a um, quick little meeting on sword so we're Anyway, we're not even going to talk about that. So anyway, so some of the other team members were asking questions about software installation and whatever, and I unmuted it. I'm like, well, I can tell you for a fact because I do it about every other day. Um, but it was very uncomfortable for me to even speak up and say anything. I was truly and completely surprised and taken aback that the rest of the ITS team, not from... Um, you know, like my specific organization where I work, but part of the other team that is 
you know, spread throughout North America, were asking these questions and I'm thinking to myself, how do you not know this answer? But then I felt like, oh, well, am I right when I say mm -hmm. that? I, so I second guessed myself. Um, and I find that I do that, I, I find that I do that a lot. Um, not so much with my, my two colleagues that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis, um, because we're very comfortable with each, with each other and we throw spaghetti against the wall constantly. And, and there's never a judgment, it's a judgment-free zone. But um, yeah, that imposter syndrome. Uh, well, you, you said that you second guess yourself all the time. Yeah. I feel like that is a good trait in, in people in IT. Because it really, it, it means that you're putting more thought into what you're doing. So you're really trying to understand that either the concepts that you're going through or the technologies that you're working on. I don't necessarily think that's a, a bad thing. Not always. I think that's a good thing. I think that that means that you actually are trying to understand things to, to the, like the full ability that you can. Yeah. So you look at it one way and then you might second guess yourself because now you just thought of another way that you could look at this. So you're really trying to, like I said, understand these concepts and technologies at a broader level. So yeah. I, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing, but I can understand how you can, you can, you see it as a bad thing. Cause I, I mean, I'm there too, but I, I think as I was like listening to you talking, like, well, that's actually kind of a good thing too. But yeah, the, the imposter syndrome, that's, I mean, that's so real. And I obviously can't imagine what it's like being a woman working in IT. I told many people before that I've always worked with women. It's always been a fantastic experience. I've never, and I guess I'm lucky in this aspect, but I don't think I've ever seen where like a woman was looked down upon or um, I, I guess besides like maybe there was like one or two experiences that we had when we worked together <laughs> uh, where it was just kind of like, you know, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you have always been the type of person to put your foot down, to stand your ground. I've always respected that about you. And like, that's like the empowerment that like, I want you to share, you know, like that's the, like, that's the story. It's like, I guess maybe you do have to like, not maybe you do have to sometimes work harder or put more effort in, or when you do put your foot down, it's probably really difficult thinking like, Shh, am I right? Am I wrong? Am I out of place? But you have that attitude and you have that mindset where like, it's not that you don't care. Oh, it's because I care. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I don't know. There's just there's something so uh, inspiring to me about you Aww. and your attitude and the way that you go about things. Oh, thank you. I've always respected that, um, and I wish that because there's many there's many women I think who have a difficult time or have really experienced very negative things within this field, and I want them to be more like you because like you just don't. It's like I said. It's like you don't care. You care, but it's like you don't care because like you're gonna stand up for what you believe in. And you're going to do what you want to do because you're you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just love that about you. I, I, I want more people, more women to feel that same way. Aw. That was just really super nice and super awesome to hear, actually, because um, to speak to that, I do care. And in, in my end users are, are my audience. And yes, I have senior management and I have my bosses and I have, you know, corporate and global and I have all of these things. But when push comes to shove, it's my end users and how they have to work and do their jobs on a daily basis. That's really where my, my focus comes from. And I think maybe that's what empowers me to be able to really look at things in a broad perspective. Um, I, maybe you will, all will disagree with me. I have a tendency to find that upper management is very narrow-minded um, in what they see as far as an overall picture on how an organization is run. And I'm not, I'm not saying that to be negative with them because they do have a lot of other things on their plate. However, I think to be a good manager, you really need to be able to look at all aspects. And I would never presume to walk into an office and tell somebody how to do their job. I just wouldn't um, because I wouldn't want somebody to walk into my office from finance and tell me how to do my network, right. which I've had them try. Mm -hmm. um, so, so my end users are always the ones that I think about with that. And I think that's it. They're kind of like my support system. They don't realize that they are. And I would never, I never ask them to be, but I think they're kind of my support system that gives me 
the strength and the courage and the wherewithal to go, whoa, whoa, you guys haven't even begun to think about this, 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 or this. And I don't believe that we should do this or yes, absolutely we should do that or we need to talk to them. And, and my boss will tell you, I'm a big one, uh, teach a man to fish. And I say that constantly mm -hmm. all the time. Teach that. a man to, let's see Zach remembers it. Teach a man to fish. Um, I want my users to be empowered. And, and so it's very easy for me because I feel like I'm advocating for my end users and that's kind of a passion for me. So, so I guess as far as, as far as if you, if you are a woman and you, and we're nurturers anyway, I mean, that's just who we are. That's our genetics. That's how God designed us to be. We carry children, we birth children, we take care of children. That's what we do. Um, that's not all you do. No, that's not all we do, but that's like. You know, that's where that comes from. That nurturing piece comes from. Not all women have it, but most women do. And some men have that more than some women. So I'm not like bashing either side or the other. But I think if you come from that, that place and you turn that into your end users and what the, what the main goal or objective is of what needs to be accomplished, it's, it gives you a little bit more strength and courage to be able to say no or to really stand behind what you believe and you know some hills are willing to die I'm willing to die on and in some hills I'm not um and is I'm dying on this hill not dying on this hill and uh the more one. yeah Sorry. that's a good one though the more time I spend in IT uh the more I learn I've made mistakes and let people push me around in the past and I found that that does me absolutely no good because I am the type of person that does care and I will spend hours and hours and hours researching and testing and you know, and if I feel like it's not ready and, and I did this at one of my previous jobs, it wasn't ready and it was a nightmare when I let them talk me into rolling it out. And then, well, why did you do this? And I'm like, well, that's because you said you wanted it. I told you it wasn't ready, but that didn't matter because when I rolled it out, it was a failure. Um, that was probably six years ago for me it was a very hard lesson for me to learn. And from that point forward, um, I have never backed down. Here, here's a question for you. As you're, I think it'll fit right into what you're talking about here. What drives you? I want to know what drives you. Like, what is it that gets you started in the morning to do what it is that you do? Um, you. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't stump me. And it's going to sound very cliche, but it's my children. Um, I am a single mom. I have two daughters, um, 18 and 22. So I, in about four months, will be an empty nester as my youngest will be going off to college. It was really super important for me. I knew I wanted divorce seven years before I got divorced. I went back to school and got my degree. I got a job. Um, I made sure that I could take care of those two girls on my own, no matter what, because I knew what was going to happen when I got divorced. And every decision that I have made is my, for my work ethic and for my career decisions and my jobs that I've taken and what I have done, the ultimate why I've made those decisions is those two girls. Um, I want to be their example. I want to. I want them to be strong, independent women, and I want them to know that it doesn't matter what they choose to do, male dominated, female dominated, whatever it is, that they get up in the morning. They have a purpose. They work the hardest that they possibly can. They're true to themselves, and you can ask my children as I say this to them all the time. Always be pure of heart with good intention. Yeah. Approach every day. Be pure of heart with good intention. And yes, you might not feel like things are going your way and how did this happen because that person certainly isn't pure of heart with good intention. I'm pure of heart with good intention and why is this happening to me? Um, but it eventually does work out for you. So that's really how I kind of approach the, that's how I, how I live my life. Mm -hmm. I talk the talk, but I walk the walk because I never want my kids to be able to say, well, you didn't do that, mom. Right, well, I can tell you from what I know about you, from working with you, knowing you as long as I have, knowing your kids and seeing everything, you're a great, you're a great role model. Thank you. And I think many people look up to you. 
And it's definitely great that your kids look up to you, and I know that they do because you do. I mean, you, you crush it. I love it. Thank you. I try. I don't always feel like I crush it. Don't get me wrong. There are days I go home and I go to bed and I cry because I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> did I really just do that today? Yes. Um, but, you know, the good Lord's willing. He gets me up every morning and I'm able to do what I do. And my life has not been easy. And I'm going to tell you this, women. So whenever you feel like you can't do it, I want to tell you that you can. And here's an example of you can. I worked for a school district for four years, and it's the same school district that Zach and I worked with, worked together at. Now, Zach was already gone by this time. Um, I was still there. In, um, I was this, smart. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that's how smart Zach was, and that's how dumb Catherine was. No. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. Um, that that position served a purpose for me, and it was it was very defining for me and in what it added to my career value. But in 2013, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, that would have been May of 2013. In July of 2013, um, I had my mastectomy, and four weeks later, I was back at work. I had interviewed for another school district for a tech director position and was offered the job, accepted the job, and worked between the two schools four weeks post mastectomy um, and walking into a school district that hadn't had a tech director for three months. So systems, nothing had been done with the system for three months. This director left on his own accord, but he was angry with the administration. He left no usernames, no passwords, no nothing. I had to hack the entire system four weeks post mastectomy. So what I want to say to you and what that means is, is that if you want something, don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do it because no matter what your circumstances are, you can. You can. Because I stand here as living proof mm -hmm. that you can do it. You're so. awesome. I love you. I love you too. You're, you, <laughs> you amaze me like all the time. You really do. I love it. You just crush it. You do. We, we all have those days where we just, we don't crush it. We crush, <laughs> it. We crush our pillow because. Oh, Lordy, I crush my pillow a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's fine though. Wow. You're, you are an inspiration. And I hope that many people watch this and see that. No. Yeah. I'm just me. Um, but here's what I would like to say. Any women or men, if you're trying to break into the IT field, I am more than happy. I mean, I've been doing this for 12 years. I and mean, if you can imagine, so we talk about now um, how hard it is for women in IT. So backtrack to 12 years ago. Um, and I've worked my, my way, you know, through the ranks. And we talked earlier that I think education is a tad bit more forgiving when it comes to hiring females. And I think that has to do with the whole children. It's a nurturing environment kind of thing. Um, but I worked at a small mom and pop shop and then six years in education and now four years um, out there in corporate America. And, and there are days it's ugly. Um, I, I went through about almost a year where... Um, I wasn't really sure if I was going to make it. I, I wished for them to fire me. I wished that they would come in and say, Catherine, this isn't working. Uh, here's your severance package and let me collect unemployment. Because I was like, well, I won't be unemployed very long. I mean, there's always IT jobs. I can do something. But for a year, I lived my life that way. Um, but God always has a plan, and I trust in his plan, and puts me where I need to be. So I'm where I need to be right now. I don't, it's my, not my forever job. It's my for now job. Um, but it's taught me a lot, and I've gained a lot of experience, and I've gained a lot more confidence, um, not because necessarily I wanted to, but because I had to. And, and that's okay, too. But I'm here for you. So, you know, reach out to Zach. Zach can get you in touch with me. I'll, I'll talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. We can email. We can message however it works. Um, I'm LinkedIn. here to support you. So, yeah. I'll share your LinkedIn. Okay. That's Make cool. Make that work. Yeah.